Welcome back to Athletic Everyday, day number 323. Uh, decided that I was going to do some sprints on the treadmill today because the track was in use. I could have gone outside and done sprints on the athletic track outside, uh, but it was a bit chilly, so I figured I'd do it inside today. Um, I'm not really sure if sprints on like a, re a recurve treadmill like this are as effective as, or if, if it's the same or similar stimulus on your body as doing sprints just like, you know, on flat ground. I'm not, I'm not certain because the curve on the treadmill, I feel like it actually reduces the, the impulse spike when your foot makes contact with the ground. You're also not making contact with a flat surface. You're making contact with a curved surface that's moving. So I think there could also be like a reduction in impulse spike um, on, you know, the Achilles tendon, you know, the foot in, in that respect as well. You're also, when you're striking the ground, as you sprint, I feel like because, again, because of the curve, your foot isn't contacting underneath the hip. It's probably contacting maybe slightly more forward than what it usually would be. So maybe there's a different stimulus on the body from the sprints, but, you know, I'm still just trying to get to the top speed. The benefit, I guess, of a curved treadmill is that you can see how fast you're actually running. So there's a very good measurable, uh, there's, you know, there's a measurable benefit uh, to it like that. So when I was looking at the top speed, I'm sort of like quickly glancing down at the, I guess you could call it a speedometer or the display screen, seeing how fast I, seeing how fast I can get to on the top speed. Um, holding that for like a second or two and then just like going back down again. So I managed to get up to 20 miles an hour, which is pretty decent for me. I've never actually measured my, my top end speed sprinting before. Um, I worked that out as being about 8.9 meters per second, uh, which is interesting because I've run my, my fastest ever 10 meter fly was 106, which is, I know, I know, you know, quick maths in my head, that's faster than 8.9 meters per second. Uh, then again, I wasn't in the, you know, the best shape today wasn't feeling the freshest when I did these sprints. Nonetheless, um, it's good that I can actually measure them and it's good to uh, see how fast I'm actually able to run, like 20 miles an hour or 32 kilometers an hour. Not too bad for an off day doing top end speed sprinting. Uh, so yeah, that was the sprints. I just did as many sets as I could until on the top end speed sprints, I noticed that I wasn't able to get up to 20 miles an hour. That's a really good way to track or to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, to auto-regulate how much you need to do. Instead of trying to stick to a random number, like, oh, I need to do X number of sprints or Y number of sprints, um, or even a certain number of meters sprinted, you can just look at how fast you're going. As soon as the speed starts to cut off, that means that you've lost the intensity. That means that you're starting to get fatigued or tired. You're not able to produce the high-level outputs anymore. Then you can just um, stop after that point. Uh, it's the same thing with um, with squatting, with any kind of lifting, or even jumping as well. As soon as you start to notice your performance drop off consistently from like one jump to the next, then that's a good sign that you know that's enough training for the day. Uh, assuming that you're fully rested and you're ready to go at the start of the session as well, you're not fatigued coming into the session excessively. Uh, so yeah, that was a sprint. Then I did a little upper body superset of some seated rows. I think you can call them seal rows as well. Some people call them seal rows, although it wasn't a flat bench. I did an incline bench. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do My arms are quite long. So if I had tried to lie flat on a, on a belt on this bench, those dumbbells would have been hitting the floor on the bottom and then did the range of the motion. Uh, but I really like these. I can really feel these in the upper back. I can feel my upper back working. And I think that that's something my training has been missing a lot in the past. I've been thinking that you know, pull-ups is, you know, the only pulling exercise that I really need to be doing, but I think especially for an accessory lift for weightlifting movements, clean, uh, clean off the floor, snatch off the floor, then I think some rowing variants can help to strengthen and stabilize the upper back in those movements. Uh, and then the superset of a push press with those steel rows is actually a really nice superset. I really like it. I like push-pull supersets. Those of you that watch the channel back in the summer, I did a lot of push-pull supersets. Uh, it saves time and also it increases the stimulus and the intensity on the upper body because the, although you're not using the same muscle groups um, between the two movements, just the general fatigue from the first exercise helps to increase the intensity on the second exercise, whichever one you choose to do first or second. Uh, I believe I did the seal rows first actually and then I did the push press afterwards. Uh, and then I finished up on the last set, increased the weight even more. I think this was a 35 kilo dumbbell and I just did as many reps as I could, uh, added a strap on the dumbbell so that I could just do as many reps as possible just to completely fatigue out my, my upper back and my lats. Then on those push presses, I worked up to a top set of 70 kilos, five reps. Maybe I could have gone a little bit heavier had I not supersetted these with the rows, but you know, I didn't have that much time for this workout. Just wanted to get the workout finished. Um, 
and yeah, overall decent workout. I quite like the idea of doing sprints and then some kind of upper body training, not having to worry about doing you know lower body training after the sprints. Uh, sprints can be on their own a very good lower body workout. You know, it's a full body workout if we're being honest with sprints, maximum effort sprints. But I don't think you need to always do lower body on the same day that you do sprinting as well. So yeah, pretty much it for today's workout. I did it; would have been better to get on the track, but overall, I'm happy with it. Decent performance. And it's interesting to see that I was able to run at 20 miles an hour. I can run at the same speed of a car in like first or second gear. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> um, anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys. And I will catch you in the next video.